collected sayings of Kodo Sawaki or Homeless Kodo, Chapter 18. To you who are complaining all the time that you haven't got any time. Everybody complains that they're so busy they haven't got any time. But why are they so busy? They only keep themselves busy to avoid boredom. A person who practices Zazen has time. When you practice Zazen, you have more time than anyone else in the world. If you aren't careful, you'll start making a big fuss just to feed yourself. You're constantly in a hurry, but why? just to feed yourself. Chickens too are in a hurry when they peck at their food. But why? Only to be eaten by humans. How many illusions does a person create in their lifetime? It's impossible to calculate day in, day out, I want this, I want that. A single stroll in the park is accompanied by 50,000, 1,000, 100,000 illusions. So that's what it means to be busy. People are constantly out of breath from running so quickly after their illusions. You want to reach nirvana to be liberated from your present life? It is exactly that attitude which is called transmigration. The development of transportation has made the world smaller. Now we race around in cars. But where to anyway? To the pinball arcade. We step on the gas just to kill time. Some people spend the night playing mahjong only to swallow a handful of vitamins the next morning and hurry to work with swollen eyes. In old koans, you often hear, where do you come from? Here, they're not asking for a place. Where do we all come from? Some desire sex. They come from sexual desire. Those who are greedy for money come from greed. Please, give me a reference. A person who says this comes from the desire for career and fame. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I haven't got any time. This is how some people go completely crazy. What should they do? The best thing would be nothing at all. They've just got to calm down. Not carrying out any human activity. That's Zazen. Big businessmen and politicians complain that they're so busy. But at the same time, they take their chances with two or three lovers. The question is simply, what is important to us? There's no end to running away. There's no end to running after. In this moment, we practice Zazen without complaints. Nothing is more precious than a life lived out of the full lotus posture. Drifting in the world is like clouds drifting in non-mind. It isn't a matter of floating more quickly. Everything moves in non-mind. Everything depends on interdependent origination. There is no substance. It's the same with clouds. It's not that they exist, but they also do not exist. At the same time, 
They do exist and they do not exist. And now everybody's cracking their heads over that. Chapter 19 To you who are tumbling down the career ladder. When you're dead and you look back at your life, you'll see that none of this mattered in the least. None of this matters at all. Stop blubbering. What a waste of tears. Grow up a little and open your eyes. You'll see that you're making a great fuss over nothing. Sometimes you hear actors in the theater saying, but what should I do? What should I do? This question has never occurred to me because I just say to myself, none of this really matters at all. Fortune and misfortune, good and bad, not everything is how it looks to your eyes. It's not how you think it is either. We've got to go beyond fortune and misfortune, good and bad. The world that human beings know is only the world which they can glimpse through the peephole of their karmic delusions. The real world appears before our eyes once we stop staring at the world of our karmic delusions. We have to break out of the world of delusion rather, rather than working our asses off in it. You talk about your troubles and worries, but what do your troubles and worries really consist of? Isn't it like someone who catches his own fart with his hand, smells it and bursts out saying, oh no, that really stinks. The more time you have, the more time you spend with your farts. At some point, you should get to know real suffering. You want to hang or drown yourself in desperation. Come back down to earth and wake up to reality. Suffering is nothing more than the suffering we create for ourselves. Some even take great pains to meticulously piece together their own suffering. Because you relate everything to yourself, everything looks like a huge problem. Where there is no mind, there are no problems. You suffer because you don't want to accept what has to be accepted. Faith means the same thing as being beyond thinking. It means acceptance. You're worried about death? Don't worry. You'll die for sure. Chapter 20 To you who like to hear ghost stories. People often ask me if ghosts really exist. Somebody who racks their brains over something like that is what I call a ghost. It's said that the dead appear as ghosts, but that's only true as long as you have the living. When the living are dead, they won't see any more ghosts. Isn't everything a hallucination? It's only because we don't recognize this hallucination as a hallucination that we wander around in life and death. Everyone is dreaming. The problem is simply the differences between the individual dreams. When you are dreaming, it isn't clear to you that you're dreaming. If somebody hits you in the face, it hurts. But this pain is also only in the dream. Some underpants are hanging to dry on a branch. Somebody sees them and thinks they've seen a ghost. Maybe you're thinking that something like that hardly ever happens in reality. But when we think, I need money, I want to become a minister, 
I want to get ahead. Aren't we all taking a pair of underpants for a ghost? Everyone is talking about reality, but this is only a dream. It's nothing more than the reality inside a dream. When people are talking about revolution and war, we think that something really special is going on. But what is it besides struggling inside a dream? When you die, you recognize your dream. Someone who doesn't put an end to dreaming before then is an ordinary person. We can neither plan nor rehearse our dreams. In the same way, Dharma is a dream. The teaching is a dream. A dream teaches a dream within a dream. If somebody treats you to a meal within a dream, it's still just a dream. It doesn't have any calories. Wandering around inside your own illusions means living your life like a sleepwalker. Even if we put on a cool face, illusions are brewing in our heart of hearts. A year from now, think back to the illusions that you had yesterday during Zazen. Two bowls made out of mud have disappeared fighting into the sea. No one has seen or heard from them since. These two lines are by Tuzan Ryokai. Chapter 29 To you who would like more money, love, status and fame, Heaven and earth give, air gives, water gives, plants give, animals give, humans give. All things give of themselves to each other. It's only within this reciprocal giving that we can survive, regardless of whether we're thankful for it or not. Nobody was granted life due to their personal merit. No one can live just by using their own strength. But nonetheless, we're all still only concerned with our own pocketbook. Stupidity is being preoccupied with your own body. Wisdom is saying, I am what I am no matter how things end up. A person outside of the way is someone who only thinks of gain and loss. A devil is someone who makes a profit off of this. What a bore, making a long face and complaining about having no money, nothing to eat, and being stuck in debt. It's only because you believe that you are entitled to revel in life and always feel good that you moan and groan about your poverty. Once, during the war, I visited a coal mine with the same outfit and a headlamp as the miners. I got into the lift and down we went. At one point, when we were going down, it seemed to me as if suddenly we were going up again. But when I looked with the lamp at the wall of the shaft, I saw that we were still going down. In the beginning, when we were accelerating downwards, we could really feel that we were going downwards. Only when the velocity changed did it seem to us as if we were going up again. In exactly the same way, when we think about our lives, 
We always go wrong when we mistake the fluctuating amounts for the final sum. Saying you've had Satori is just an interpretation of changing circumstances, as is saying you're lost in illusion. Saying good is an interpretation of change. Saying bad is another. Rich is an interpretation. Poor, another. It's self-evident that a poor man suffers less from his poverty than someone who was rich until a moment ago. Although you're really not so hungry, you say you've got nothing to eat. That alone makes you hungry. Words make for nightmares. Everyone makes a big deal over words. I taught my parrot to say, I'm doing fine. One day the lamp fell and everything caught fire. Flapping his wings furiously, my parrot cried out his last words. I'm doing fine, I'm doing fine, and died. We're constantly being misled by our body and mind, and we don't even realize it. In the impermanent world, we try to get forward with our name wherever we can. Yet, aren't we all born naked? Only afterwards did we get our name, our jumpers, and our nipple. Once we're big, we suddenly appeal to our importance, strength, intelligence, or wealth just to make a name for ourselves. All along, we're only naked. What we construct as the world is nothing more than a mirage in the desert or a palace made out of ice. At another time, in another place, it would all melt away. Everybody sleeps in the bed of Buddha nature and only dreams their illusion. Buddha says, everything is good as it is. There isn't a single lost being. There's no reason to get excited. But the lost beings cry out, no, that's not how it is. Having the mind of the way means forgetting yourself for the others. Forgetting the others for yourself means not having the mind of the way. Losing is awakening. Winning is illusion. The difference between yourself and the others disappears only when you completely give yourself up for the others. That's what it means to save the others before you yourself are saved. Not coveting a single thing is the greatest gift you can give to the universe. The world in which everything is given freely offers a perspective which is cool and clear, wide and unlimited. This is completely different from the perspective in the world of every man for himself. Buddha's compassion is different from mere pity. His compassion provides a perch we can't fall from, no matter how we may stumble. Big mind means Buddha mind. It means living 24 hours a day without grabbing onto a single thing. It means not hanging onto the conventions of the world. Chapter 22. To you who wish you could lead a happier life. 
you simply need to take a short break. Being Buddha means taking a short break from being a human. Being Buddha doesn't mean working your way up as a human. In everything, people follow their feelings of joy, anger, sadness, and comfort. But that's something different from the normal state of mind. The normal state of mind means cease fire. Without preferences, without animosity, without winning and losing, without good and evil, without joy and pain, that's everyday mind. What do we have when we truly have a grip on things as they are? Beyond thinking. Beyond thinking doesn't allow itself to be thought. No matter if you think so or not, things are simply as they are. All things are empty means there's nothing we can collide with. Because nothing is really happening, we only think something's happening because we are intoxicated by something. Nothing is ever happening, no matter what seems to be going on. That's the natural condition. Illusion means losing this natural condition. Normally, we don't recognize this natural condition. Normally, we cover it with something else, so it's not natural anymore. The Buddha Dharma means the normal condition. Yet, in the world, everything is unnatural, domineering, succumbing, and discussing everything to death are unnatural. What's important is not to win and not to lose. In triumph, not to lose the way. And in defeat, not to lose the way. Yet, people these days, when they win, they lose their heads and lose the way. And when they lose, they lose it anyway. If they have money, they lose the way. And without money, they lose it as well. If you do it like this, you'll get this result. That's how it works in the world, but not in the Buddha Dharma. Taking care of people isn't about just any people. I myself have children at home. If I take care of them now, they can take care of me later. That's the logic of the world. Simply doing what's good for nothing isn't so easy. Practicing it means dropping off body and mind. Body and mind dropped off. Crude things like getting in fights and picking up girls are obviously among the passions. However, the real problem isn't these, but much finer passions. We have to concentrate on the details. The mind is one with things as they are. Don't get stuck on anything. Be open. Where no single thing has ever existed, no single thing should ever exist. Emptiness means each and everything. Every potato, no matter how small, has something to do with you. Every teacup concerns you. True emptiness is the emptiness that cannot even be called emptiness. When you talk about heaven, 
you squeeze heaven into a frame. True God is the God who has forgotten God, who has even stopped being God. Offering that which fills the whole universe to everything in every instant, that's Samadhi. In Buddhist teaching, one isn't only one. Being isn't only being. Nothingness isn't only nothingness. In Buddhist teaching, one is everything and everything is one. Being is nothingness and nothingness is being. Someone asked a, mathemati a mathematician once if the number one really existed. The answer was that, a matter of fact, mathematics only operates on the assumption that the number one exists. In Buddhism, we don't even assume the existence of one. It's said, two exists because of one, but don't hold on to this one either. One is everything, Everything is one. As it is means that there isn't the least confusion to be found anywhere in the entire universe. Each place fills heaven and earth. Every instant is eternal. To practice the way of Buddha means to completely live out this present moment, which is our whole life, here and now. Practice isn't something that you can pile up. Don't make it into a tool for anything either. Every aspect of daily life has got to be the practice of Buddha. It isn't good to wolf down your meal in order to practice zazen afterwards. We don't eat in order to work either. Just eat naturally. During your meal, just eat. Eating is practice. Don't say strange things like the salvation of suffering beings or religious practice. Everything is all right as long as everything you do with your hands and feet is done with a solid comportment. Recognizing impermanence means not grabbing at anything for yourself. You speak loudly of reality, but reality is nothing fixed. Everything is impermanent. Past mind cannot be grasped, means that the past is already past and doesn't exist anymore. Present mind cannot be grasped, means that the present never stands still. Future mind cannot be grasped, means that the future hasn't arrived yet. In short, it all means impermanence. What is the basis of formlessness? There's nothing which isn't based on formlessness. But when we try to hold formlessness still, it becomes form. Formlessness means not running after and not running away. Everybody is lost in delusion. People weep, laugh, are upset or happy, congratulate themselves. Or pout. When we stop this delusion, none of this remains. To do this, we've got to massage our heads. We've got to be relaxed to be able to see things without delusion. 
If your head has skin as thick as a grapefruit, nothing can penetrate. If your head is as simple as a soldier's, you lack flexibility. Your head has got to encompass everything, the entire universe. That's the supreme way. Even if we say that just practicing zazen is enough, we still have to eat when we're hungry. And when our money runs out, we've got to go begging. But if we're not careful, we'll make our routine out of that. However good what we do is, as soon as it becomes routine, it isn't any good anymore. We mustn't hold on to anything. It's a matter of being free and unhindered. Don't squeeze the way of Buddha into any frame. A person who doesn't recognize differences is an idiot. A person who is constantly bothered by differences is an ordinary person. A talent of mine is that I can always go back to being the errand boy named Saikichi, who I was when I was little. Now, when I am about to leave on a trip and one more person comes with a pile of paper for me to fill with calligraphy, I can sometimes get a bit angry. But then I throw myself into it like in the days of Saikichi, the errand boy. In those days, when I came home from a long day without any money and without any orders, I shook in fear of my hysterical stepmother waiting at home. As Saikichi, I was glad for every order, even when I had nothing in my belly.